In my past years of teaching, I developed all sorts of theories about the Blue Note. At the time, I felt that the explanations I offered were good enough to clarify the phenomenon. In those years, however, I mostly spoke about the placement of the Blue Note within a specific chord type or scale type. However, I had no explanation as to where this mysterious note came from. With the decatonic model, and with a bit further analysis, it all became clear. In fact, my old way of teaching was in effect up until literally a few weeks ago. Then, after toying around with the decatonic model, the light bulb lit up. I want to share you my insights with you now in this video. A quick definition of the blue note would be the flatted third on a major chord and the flatted fifth on a minor chord. Using the decatonic model, let's see about extracting these blue notes from major and minor chords. In a 12 bar blues, we have a 1 dominant 7, 4 dominant 7, and 5 dominant 7. And now, let's look at the decatonic model to see if we can get a blue note on all three of these chords. We'll be using A7 as our 1 dominant 7, D7 as our 4 dominant 7, and finally E7 as our 5 dominant 7. Here, I'll be demonstrating the blue note in the context of a phrase that starts with the root of the chord, which then moves up to the blue note, resolving to the natural third, and then back to the root. So here we go. Can we get the C blue note for the A7 chord? And yes, it looks like we can. Following the same type of phrasing, let's check to see if we can get a blue note on a D7 chord, which would be the F note. And there it is. Finally, we need to get a blue note G for the E7 chord. And yes, everything is in order. We're getting all three blue notes. But what about minor chords? Do minor chords get a blue note too? Yep, they very much do. In the major or dominant seventh chord, the blue note expresses itself as the flatted third. In minor chords, it's expressed as the flatted fifth. Let me explain why before we try and look for these notes in the decatonic model. Here I have two C major scales staggered so you can see the overlap between the C major chord and the A minor chord. The upper scale is a standard C major scale, but I began the lower C major scale on the A note, also known as the Aeolian mode. They're actually the same exact scale so long as the C root is maintained. Highlighted in red are the notes C, E, and G in the upper C scale, and the notes of the A minor chord, A, C, and E, are below. The major third interval is between the notes C and E in both chords. Above, you can see the flatted third of the C major chord, and below, you can see that between the C and E in the A minor chord, the E flat note becomes interposed as the blue note on the A minor chord. Now, moving back over to the key of A major, let's see about grabbing the flat five blue notes on the minor chords of that key. First, we'll check out the F sharp minor chord or the sixth minor chord in the key of A. The blue note resides between A and C sharp as the C note. Let's see if we get it. Next, looking at the two minor chord of the key of A, which is B minor, we should find the blue note between the notes D and F sharp expressed as the F note. Let's find out. And there we have it, again coming straight out of the decatonic model. And for our final minor chord, C sharp minor, we should be able to grab the blue note between the notes E and G sharp as the G note. We now have the blue notes accounted for in all six stable chords of the key of A major. Half steps in music appear to be attracted to one another. I contend that the blue note is a function of the half step movement within a major third interval. I believe that the flatter third, a half step below the natural third, is attracted upward to rest on that natural third. This would explain the convention of flat three to natural three in blues improvisations. It can also be attracted downward as a passing tone going down to the ninth of a chord. 
This will be evidenced in the next video about the blues turnaround. My complete and total conviction is that the blue note can only appear within the context of a major third interval. I decided to look more deeply into this by locating all the major third intervals in the C major scale and then adding the blue notes into those major third intervals. Here I've built the C scale in thirds so we can easily see the minor and major thirds within the key. The minor thirds are X'd out because we're only considering the major thirds which allow for the blue note. There is no blue note in a minor third interval, just a scale tone. All notes of the C major scale are accounted for here except in the order C, E, G, B, D, F, A and back to C again, basically building the scale in leaps of thirds instead of adjacent seconds. In this chart, I've shown the major thirds, including the half-step blue note that appears within it. The blue note can only be related to the major third interval with the minor third interval interposed upon it. To my mind, this chart is a beautiful and elegant way to see things. One thing we could tease out now is how the blue note functions in all the chords of the key of C major. You can see the blue note here between the major third intervals of C to E, G to B, and F to A. So when you build the C triad C, E, G, you find the blue note of E flat in the context of that chord. I won't belabor the point by going through each and every chord, but let's just take one more chord, E minor, expressed as E, G, B. Here you'll notice that the blue note sits between G and B. That note is B flat, which is the flatted fifth of the E minor chord. You can take my word for it that each and every chord of the key of C, save for the B, D, F diminished chord, contains a blue note. Why not the diminished chord? It's solely composed of minor thirds. You can't find a blue note there. Now here is what's amazing to me. If we gather all these notes together, including the blue notes, and string them together alphabetically, guess what we find? That's right, the decatonic blues model appears for us once again. This is staggering to me. The same decatonic model shows up from two completely different angles. The first way we got that model was to combine two keys. The other way, we got the very same model by adding the blue notes to the major thirds of that key. To me, this is proof positive that I'm really onto something here. Now let's keep in mind that the blue note can function wherever a major third interval shows up. In the C major 7 chord, the major third intervals C to E and G to B appear. On our chart, the blue note between C and E is E flat. Also, the more important point is that the B flat blue note shows up between G and B. Does this mean you can successfully use the blue note here? You bet it does, and it sounds great to boot. The minor ninth chord has two major thirds and therefore two blue notes. The same exact lick we use for C can be used on A minor 9 because we have the same two major third intervals of C to E and G to B. This also sounds just fine. On the G dominant ninth chord, we get the usual G to B major third giving us the B flat blue note, but more importantly, we also get a major third interval between F and A, or the flat seventh and the ninth. So we get the blue note movement A flat to A, flat nine to natural nine, and this sounds great too. I'm getting a bit of a ragtime sound from this one. Now, what about the augmented chord that is expressed as three major third intervals? Does that mean it contains three blue notes? Check this out for a very cool jazz lick. This can continue upward and onward as a motif against this chord. Keep in mind that all the information I'm giving you throughout all these videos and future ones as well, that we're basing all of this on one simple blues concept, minor under major. Perhaps you're beginning to see why I say that the blues is at one and the same time the easiest form to play through 
and the most sophisticated. One of the beautiful things about music and music theory is that simple concepts lead to all sorts of amazing sonic possibilities. In the next installment of this series, I'm going to take a deep dive into the blues turnaround to show you that it's much, much more than just a turnaround. This one's going to be fun. Until then, take care and thanks for watching.